الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيدنا وصندنا ومولانا محمد المصطفى صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والا أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد فلا تتبع الهوى فيدلك عن سبيل الله صدق الله مولانا العزيم وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الدنيا سجن المؤمن وجنة الكافر صدق رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في شان حبيبه مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وأصحاب سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وصل عليه الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا نبي الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا نبي الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا سيدي يا رحمة للعالمين Dear respected honorable Ustad teacher Hazrat Maulana Allama Sheikh Raza Yazdani Misbahi Sahib دامت بركاته العالية والقدسية and respected elders, brothers, youngsters, honored mothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته after praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى the provider, the all sustainer, the cherisher the most forgiving and the most merciful and after sending infinite salutations and blessings upon our noble master, the leader and the jewel of creation, Sayyiduna Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallam, I would like to thank my honorable teacher for inviting a something naqis, uh, incomplete, nothing, nobody to talk in front of you guys and it gives me great honor that once again I have this uh, ability and the tawfiq Allah Almighty has given me to have the ziyara of Mulana Sahib because uh, it's not often we get to see each other when we do we try to make the most of it so Alhamdulillah it's, uh, it's an honor when they invited myself and uh, I said uh, Sunday evenings free Sunday during the day is difficult because I'm working and it'll be very hard to get away and they said Khair, we'll do Sunday evening that's fine and inshallah uh, that time has come very quickly that I sit in front of yourselves now mm-hmm. Alhamdulillah you know at this moment in time there seems to be a revival starting to occur and that's a revival of reviving the hearts of the Sunni youth 
whether it's in the field of uh, creed, aqeedah, rectifying and sorting out the youth's beliefs, those who have been distorted and have been taught distorted teachings, whether it's bringing them back to the asal, which is the Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, or whether it's related to issues that on the apparent don't seem to have no connection to the deen. Youth related issues, social issues, issues such as drinking, gambling, going out, wasting your life in nightclubs and pubs, whether it's issues relating to marriage, whether it's issues relating to education and trying to revive the youth to educate themselves on the deen and in secular studies as well at the same time. These are all problems that we have been facing for the last 30-40 years since Muslim, uh, our grandfathers, great-grandfathers or our fathers have come to this country. This was a hidden enemy that we did not realize at that time or they did not realize. Those that did took the relative steps. But the majority that didn't are now suffering the consequences of being lost in the dunya and thinking about establishing themselves, securing themselves and not giving attention to the security and the future of their children. That's why today you see majority of the youth, majority of the youth are lost in the dunya, they have no connection to Islam, it's just parrot fashion, verbally, yes, I am Muslim, khalas. I'm Muslim, man, I go read my Jum'ah, that's more than enough. I've done my little bit for, for the week. I've, you know, um, what's it called? I've, I've gave my one step, it purifies my sins, this one Jum'ah. That Jum'ah as well, he turns up, you know, right at the end at 1.30 when <laughs> Imam Sahib just about finished his khutbah. He's not even heard the khutbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still accept his Jum'ah. May Allah Almighty continue to accept his Jum'ahs. That individual who's grown up like this, lost in the society, lost in secularism, lost in materialism, lost in the desires of the dunya. Now, this is something that we always, we are always hearing. <coughs> These are problems that we're always talking about. I had some uh, people on Facebook, on my wall, uh, on Imam Asim wall where mashallah they give constructive feedback to the problems that we're facing and I said look the problems are clear for 20 years we've been talking about the problem now bring forward solutions hmm. bring forward a solution a revolutionist is he who causes the solution no. not who identifies the problem yes. his team identifies the problem and says look this is the problem he devotes his entire life to the next 30 years that are going to come. But these are the Sahibul Basira. These are people of foresight. They have such a foresight, such a nigah that they see forward and they say, look, in the next 30 years, this is a problem we're facing. If we do not deal with this issue now, our society is going to, it's going to get worse and worse than it already is. So we need to look at solutions of how to get out this problem, this situation that we're in. And I believe that at this moment in time, problems such as drugs, smoking skunk and weed, whether it's abusing drugs by smoking them, or whether it's dealing drugs and becoming a drug dealer, whether you're picking up or dropping off, whether you're the one who's dividing, ouncing, you're doing all that. Whether it's somebody who is wasting his own life or whether it's somebody who's destroying others' lives. No matter who it is, what it is, we need to now give these individuals a solution. We need to make them aware of the sin that they are committing. You know, when you speak to a drug dealer who's in the game, who's making his money, he's laundering his money, hey, ah, bro, I ain't doing nothing wrong, it's all about making a quick earner. This world that we live in is all about making quick money. Everyone is lost in the disease of money. You know, mal and dolat, this is something which has eaten our hearts, it's taken the attention of our heart. 
Our mind is always thinking about how am I going to pay my mortgage off? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? How often have we thought about, you know what, I need to now, you see, I, I've got, you know, 10% of my wealth I'm going to give to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sadaqah. The 2.5% I will give as zakat. The rulings of zakat, nobody ever thinks about them no more. How often do you hear bayans and khutbahs on zakat? The importance of purifying your wealth. Especially if you're a rich man, especially if you have businesses, you have land and property, the accountability that you will face, how often do you hear this? How often do you yourself think that I have to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a right over me to first educate myself, I have to go out and study. And when you learn that zakat is fard on you, you pay the zakat. Whether it's the issue of drugs, whether it's the issue of drinking, massive problem in our society. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, Indeed, a sign of the final hour will be, Inna min ashrat is sa'a. Indeed, a sign of the final hour will be, people will drink alcohol vastly. Muslims will begin to drink alcohol. Today, look at the state that we're in. Muslims are owning pubs. Muslims walk into pubs openly, freely. Ah, no problem. I'm not drinking. I'm just going to chill with the boys. They walk into nightclubs, destroy their lives, two, three in the morning, do what they have to do, then return back home. Drunk out of their head, don't know who their son is, who their daughter is, their mother is, their father is. Have no respect, no sharm, no haya. This is related to the youth. I'm talking to the youth here, the elders who are sitting here, Bihamdillahi ta'ala, I hope they don't drink. <laughs> I'm not saying anyone sitting here does. But generally speaking, you guys, alhamdulillah, are experienced people. You guys have what you call tajarba. You guys have that experience. And it's that experience that is valuable. You've seen life more than what I have seen. More than what Mulana Saab has seen. You know, you have seen far more. I'm talking to the elders here. You guys are living examples of society now. That has seen it all and says, look, I've been there, done that. Now you don't want to go there. Yeah. Learn from the mistakes of the past. The clever individual, the wise man, is he who learns from the errors and mistakes of those who came before him. Oh, no. No. So in the future, he doesn't make the very same mistakes. It's like, you know, when you're walking, you see a pothole on the road. Somebody has tripped already from there. Council hasn't fixed it. <laughs> yeah, council hasn't fixed it still. You walk past and you trip over it as well. You see next man fall over. You didn't realize that he's fallen over walking there. And you've seen him fall over. And if you go and you fall over as well, then what have you learned? Whereas a, a bigger fool as the one who, who's seen it in the first place. But the clever man, he sees him fall and he says, you know what? I'm going to take a... Root, you know, Tom Tom's going to take me somewhere else. That's the... If only Tom Tom could do that, dodge the potholes. <laughs> but it doesn't, it doesn't do that. It doesn't have that service just yet on it. So, uh, you know, you see it and you think, that's a clever man. These are wise people. They've looked at the past and they've said, look, this is the mistake. This, uh, you know, in our society, these are the problems. This is how we're going to change it. They think for the future. So when once we have identified the issue of drinking, the issue of uh, you know, drugs and alcohol, gambling. Boy, oh boy, what a big problem in our society is gambling. People are not earning money. It's fine, difficult to find jobs. So whatever 10 pound they have, they'll go and place a bet. And they think they'll earn. I've seen so many people, so many Muslims, walk into Ladbrokes and Bookies to place bets. Thinking, and having to work upon that, that that's what's going to give me money. It's a reality, it's a hakikat, it's a disease in our society. Gambling is a big problem. People think they will earn money in this haram way. I put 10 pound in, maybe I'll get 100 in return. The 10 is haram, the 100 is haram. The 10 that you've put in, that's become haram. And the, the 100 that you will earn back, that has become haram. Lottery tickets, common. Yeah, it's only 1 pound 50. Just how much, how much is a lottery ticket? Nobody's going to say nothing now. <laughs> so they don't get caught out. 
I don't know, 150, 140, I don't know how much it is. I've never done it, never paid attention. When you go into the news agent, we look at the chocolates, not the <laughs> lottery tickets. So, I, I, don't, I don't know, you, you, whatever the price is, one pound, 52 pound. You scratch it. So much umid, ke mumkin. You know what, I might be a millionaire by the end of the night. <laughs> Roll over, you know, I've got it. Puts on BBC One, waits for the numbers to be called out. Oh, wasted again. You know why he's a fool? Because he'll go back and try it again. <laughs> Allah Almighty has taught him once, don't go, don't do it. Cholo, you want to do it, do it. Check it. He goes there, wastes his money, scratches the card, doesn't get nothing. Then again, he goes back and he thinks, I'll get it next time. Why? Why have you... Why can you, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the person who works with his own hands. Man will labor as they say. He goes out and he works, a, a, you know, hard day's earning. He earns the money. Allah Almighty gives him the risk. He's worthy of that. Rather than that drug dealer who, you know, picks up drops of 150 quid. He's killing somebody at the same time. You know, you're, you're harming somebody's body. You're taking responsibility of it. Whether you're the carrier, you're the joey who carries the, the tennis bag, or whether you're the one who's actually shipped it over from Turkey or you know the, 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 the drug dealing countries, Colombia. Whether it's it's it, whether it's the one who's shipping it, whether it's the head of the mafia, whether it's the, the joey at the bottom, no matter who it is, they're all part of that thing that is killing society. A disease, a social illness that we're facing. And you know what, it, it, why were drugs made? Why, if you look at the history of America, when drugs came into existence and it was promoted, why was it promoted? They would distract people, fill people's time. Those who are going to become successful, destroy that nation, infiltrate drugs into them. At first it was attributed to the blacks. They were commonly known for the drugs in, in America. And then you see, because it was good money, good business, you know, some people, they said, we will take responsibility now. Al Capones, these people, Al Capone, very famous, 1920s, drunk, drinking and, 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 and drugs. You study his life, that's what he was known for. And the man had the whole of New Jersey on lockdown. He had the whole of New York on lockdown. Everyone feared Al Capone. Al Capone was the man. He earned his money, but where's Al Capone now? He's a lesson in history to say this is a man who tried to kill people. He was a murderer. What's, what's left of him? What remains? Where is he buried? Nobody knows. We don't know where Al Capone is. I've never known. I've never bothered finding out. But the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, when Allah Almighty loves them, even if you don't know where they're buried, the name is engraved in your heart. Even if you don't know where Bishr al-Hafi is, Ahmad ibn Hanbal is, but that name is engraved in your heart. You will always remember that name with, with a smile on your face. Bishr Hafi rahmatullah alayhi. Fudail ibn Ayyad, Sari al-Saqati, Ibrahim ibn Adham. You know, great Zahideen, great Sufiya, Awliyaullah, who had the dunya, had the dunya, had everything in the dunya, but sacrificed it. So when we look at the gambling issue, we look at the drugs issue, the drinking issue, all this big issue that we're facing. Now when you take this big drugs, drinking, gambling, and other social illnesses into consideration, Nabi alayhi salatu salam, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, you know what's the root cause of all this evil? Nabi alayhi salatu salam said, Hubbu dunya ra'su kulli khati'ati. This is because that individual has love for the dunya. He's immensely in love with the dunya. The, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Love of the dunya is the head of every evil action. <coughs> every bad activity that you do, somewhere within that action, intention, it's the hubbu dunya that is taking your, your attention. You're lost in the love of the dunya. When you are lost in the love of the dunya, you can't look towards the akhirah. You know, they say, aim high. Aim far and wide. Try to reach the moon. If you don't get to the moon, you'll get to the stars at least. But you're not in the dunya. As long as you're not in the dunya, you'll be fine. What is zuhud? 
You see, there's a, this is what I want to talk about today. I believe that this is one way of curing the diseases. Oh, is making the youth aware of this aspect of tasawwuf. This chapter of spirituality. You see, what the youth lack is spiritualism. Spirituality and those who are on the spiritual path, it's not making them humble. I've noticed it doesn't make them humble. They get more, oh yes, look, I am, I'm Sufi. <laughs> I'm better to this sheikh and this sheikh. Sufi had never taught this. In 1400 years of spiritual history of Islam, not once did the sheikh say, do my ta'rif. <laughs> Praise the Prophet and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> this is asal tasawwuf. This is true spirituality. Where are those people gone? Everyone looks for their own wawa. Oh me, me. I have to have the limelight and attention. <laughs> nobody looks, nobody says, let him take attention. <laughs> this is the dunya, this is our tasawwuf today. Our of today, our spirituality teaches me and you to wear big flashy turbans and jubbe and kubbe and have the tasbihs in your hand. This is the of today, we think. You know, Data Saab Ali Hujwiri, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, Data Ganj Baksh of Lahore. Yeah, Data Saab Rahmatullahi, around a thousand years ago, they passed away. The Urs is coming up very close, in the next week or so, I think, next couple of days, Mumkin. Data Sahib Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi wrote a great book called Kashful Mahjub. <laughs> you might be thinking he's going, you know, he started on drugs and alcohol and he's on Data Sahib. But I'll relate Data Sahib to that as well, you watch. I'll get back to that somehow. Just keep, someone keep a point of where I was, because I do forget. Data Sahib Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi in Al-Kashful Mahjub. Unveiling the veils. Doing kashf of the hijabs, make, unveiling the secrets. Tata Sahib Rahmatullah in this great treatise on Sufiyah and spirituality, they write in there that I live in a day and age, I live in a time where everyone determines tasawwuf and Sufiyah and spirituality, zuhud. They determine it by the, how big the jubba and kubba is. I ask you this question, Tata Saab came a thousand years ago, this was a problem they faced then. But they say all around me, <coughs> the people around me who claim to be of Tasawwuf, those who claim to be Zahideen and Sufiya, they think it's all about wearing big jubbas and kubbas. Tata Saab said, this is not Tasawwuf. You know, the true Sufiya, if you ever analyze their life, the true men of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they used to wear ragged clothes. Just one piece of cloth to cover them. Cover their, their aura, just to cover their body. Nothing flashy. Today's day and age, bring it to the 21st century. Look, I said I'll bring Data Sahib to today's time. Data Sahib Rahmatullah they taught these teachings. Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abu Zar al-Ghifari, Abu Darda, great ascetic companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they had simple lives. Sayyidina Abu Darda detested money, had no love for money, he was against money. You read his aqwal, their, their sayings, money was the last thing that they ever spoke about. They always tried to put people off the love for money. They said, that's the disease. You know, when, and it is the disease today. It's the biggest disease me and you are facing is we just want money. It's why do we want a degree? So we got money. In this world, in this Western world, that's what the Western world wants you to think. Become a slave of the bank. Enslave yourself to the dunya. Enslave yourself to the dollar and dime. Enslave yourself to money, respect. Enslave, and it doesn't matter how you get it. They sometimes inspire you with gangster movies so that you're enslaved. But the mission is one, become a slave of the dunya. Do not become a slave of Allah. That's the mission of secularism, I'm telling you. In simple words, my understanding, that the secular society, those who live in the Western world, those who are lost in the dunya, why are you lost in the dunya? Because they've read our history. 
They read the life of Bishr al-Hafi. They read the life of Bayezid al-Bistami, rahmatullahi. They read the life of Mullah Jalaluddin al-Rumi. They read the life of Hazrat Fudayl ibn Iyad. They read the, read the life of, of, of the great Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani. Khwaja Mu'inuddin Chishti Ajmeri. They read the lives of these people. They seen these were revolutionists. These were men who revolutionized their society. When they stepped on India, 9.1 million became Muslims. Khwaja Mu'inuddin Chishti Ajmeri. Then they looked at why? What's, such, what's so great about this personality that he's changing society around him? These were enslaved, these were slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were engrossed in the slavery of Allah. They were engrossed in worship. They were engrossed in studying knowledge. They were engrossed in, in, in the akhirah, doing dhikr and talking about that world, not this world. Their conversations always were around Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi they, every lip, every, every time their mouth moved, it was praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing the dhikr of Allah Almighty. You know what they've done? They've substituted, they tried to remove that and now they've given you gossip columns. That's what they've given you now. They've given you newspapers to read. Don't read the Quran, read a newspaper. Don't read Quran, read magazine. No. Watch the TV, you get more entertainment. They entertain your lives. They don't want you to, you know, why is it today a man who doesn't wear flashy clothes is frowned on? Yet in the Sufiyah's time, a man who didn't wear flashy clothes, he was a man of Allah. Because society has, it makes you think like this, get out of this matrix that you're in. And it's this love for the dunya that has caused us. You see, love for the dunya is love for money. It's the same thing. Because we have deep-rooted love for money and dunya because we're in we're stuck in this system i know so many gangsters who don't want to get out of that line but they said where do we begin there's so much baggage on us we have so much baggage on our shoulders where do we where do we stop how we're earning our money 40 years i've earned haram how do i clean that now they've got a track record a history now how do they remove this it's become so hard for them they don't know how to get out of the system. They lost in the system for too long. They've been slaves to the system. The last thing they'll do is read Salah. That's the last thing they will do. They will try every other means. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the first thing you want to read your Salah. Begin prayer. Purify yourself. Make wudu. Purify your physical limbs. Then purify your heart. Islam is of zahir and batin, not just zahir. We are not people who emphasize external appearance. Not just, just that. We are not the Zahiris, nor are we the Batanis. That it's all about inside, forget how I look. We are Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, Zahir and Batin combined. <coughs> That's what he called Tariqat and Shariat. That's what he called Tariqah and Shariah. Batin is Tariqah and Zahir is Shariah. When you have the Tariqah and Shariah together, then can you only reach the objective which is Hakika. Then you will reach the ultimate reality of the purpose of your life. That's when you will get there. But if you don't have one nor the other, I'm saying today's day and age, 21st century, we neither have both. We neither have Sharia, neither do we have Hakika or uh, Tariqa. Neither are we part of no spiritual chain. We don't want to clean inside. How often do you sit and think how your heart is? How often have you sat there and thought, why am I so jealous about people? Why have I got bukhal in my heart? Why do I have amal with alif? Long wind, wind desires of long life. Why? Why have you ever thought about how your heart looks? How is your heart decorated? You know, Nabi Salatu Salam said, when, that, when you do a sin, a black dot appears. That's actual true. Maybe when you open the heart, it seems red with vessels and blood vessels and uh, uh, what do you call them? Arteries and stuff like this. It might have all that then. It might seem zahir and it might seem like this. But inside there, it's what's going on inside that heart. The blood is pumped around the heart 70 times in a minute. Is it 70, 70 times in a minute? It's being pumped. What's being pumped inside? What's your heart pumping? You know the awliya Allah, the, the men of Allah, the people not of the dunya. The people not of the dunya, their heart is pumping the name of Allah 70 times in a minute. Hakikat, Wallahi al My Shaykh Mufti Hassan Baba, 
Hafizahullah, they, they told me a story once of a man in their village. He was so engrossed in the, in the dhikr of Allah Almighty, so engrossed, that even after he died, his heart was moving, Allah, Allah, his chest was moving. He was that engrossed in the dhikr of Allah Almighty. That when they looked at him, he's passed away. But because his heart was in air, it's a habit. He was addicted to dhikr. He wasn't addicted to alcohol. The men of Allah Almighty have the right addictions. You know, the word addict, it creates an image. Straight away you think alcohol addict, drug addict. You know, we now need to create this image of addict as a dhikr addict. Fikr addict. You know, nobody does fikr no more. I believe in this 21st century, at this moment in time, the mission that we are on of reviving the youth, bringing them back to the Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, awakening their hearts, making them realize where we're going wrong, trying to instill Islam into them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are just puppets. We are just, Allah Almighty, if He selects us to do work today, I've got to do a speech tomorrow, I don't, uh, that's Allah Almighty, we don't complain. But the purpose of this is eventually that, you know, that heart is thus, if you, what made Nabi alayhi salatu salam the greatest creation? What made Nabi alayhi salam the greatest? What was it, you know, that, the thing that we could relate to? You know, bringing a dead man back to life is a great miracle, isn't it? If a dead person, if Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani radiyallahu ta'ala an, they brought a dead man to life. That was a karamat of this. Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salatu wasalam did a mu'jizah. They brought dead people to life. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam brought dead people to life. But you know what's a greater miracle? That you're alive, but dead, but then he, they bring you back to life. You're alive, you walk, you talk, you do everything, but your heart is dead. If you can awaken a dead heart and bring life into that, you've done a great, that, that's, the, that's what Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam did. They revived dead hearts. Hearts that were walking towards the hellfire, Nabi alayhi salam said, you come in with me to paradise. <laughs> That's what Nabi alayhi salatu salam did. And how was that? What two means? The Quran, how often do we read the Quran? How often are we connected to this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? A book that Hazrat Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhumai, they used to say that if I had lost the rope of my camel, I could open the Quran and I will find it in there. <laughs> Yani the Quran has answer to everything. وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ And we have revealed وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ And we have sent from the Quran مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ We've sent the cures to every disease in the Quran. وَرَحْمَةٌ The Quran is a mercy for you. Why do you not treat this book as a mercy for yourself? Why is this book something that, oh man, how often do you read it? When you were studying in, 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 in the mosque? That's the only time you read? When you're 15, yeah, I've read the Quran three times. My father, he, he never read the Quran. Put the thing with the prayer. Tell him, come home now. You've read your Quran, you've learned the Quran. <laughs> never has he said, you know what? I want my son to understand what the Quran is teaching him. No. How often do parents think like this? No, 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 he can read the Quran. That's, that's the bare minimum. It's a great reward in just reading the Quran. Every letter you get 10 rewards for. Every letter you read in the Quran, you get 10 rewards for. But imagine every letter you read in the Quran that constructs a word, and then you understand what that word means. Imagine his maqam. That's a fark between an alim and a hafiz. Hafiz of Quran is great. He'll take 10 people from the destined to the hellfire to paradise. You know the alim ad -deen. He will stand as an ummah on his own. <laughs> he will stand as a nation on his own on the, day of, on the day of judgment. How often do we want our children to be on that? But the root cause again, let's, let's, let's boil down. What, what's the problem? It's hubbu dunya. We're lost in the love of the dunya. And you know, when, what's, what's the opposite of that? I've tried to create an image in your minds. What's the opposite now of all this? It's a key word that is taught by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Zuhud. Zuhud is the word. That's asceticism, the spirituality. You know what Zuhud is? You know the definition of a Zahid, a man of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that is Zahid, is he lives in the dunya, but the dunya doesn't live in him. You live in the dunya, you eat, you walk, you talk, you stand, you sit, you work, 
you study, you do everything. But the dunya that you live in, that doesn't live inside his heart. What does that mean? That means he lives in the dunya, he does everything like me and you, walks and talks. But you know the desire you have in your heart for the very same dunya that you live in, he doesn't have that desire. He doesn't have that desire. He doesn't have long wim desires. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know when they spoke about the, in the Quran about desires, Allah Almighty said, فَلَا تَتَّبِعِ hawa." Do not follow your desire. You know what your desire is? It's that, you know, the evil conscious inside you that talks to you. Yeah, go. Do this, do that. The bad stuff that tells it to do. The nafs ammaratun bisu. The nafs which wants you to do bad. That conscious that talks to you, that makes you want to do bad. The, the waswasa of the shaitan. This is all one thing. That's all the desire. That comes under the desire. Nabi alayhi salatu salam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran have clearly illustrated fala tattabi'il hawa. Don't follow your desire. Do not be muttabi', do not do ittiba. Do not follow your desires. When your desire is telling you to do against khilaf of Quran and Sunnah, then that's then you're in a bad state, man. You are in a bad state as a Muslim, as a as a as a human being. If your heart is telling you to do bad. You know, the thing that is connected to you since the day you were born till the day you will die, even in your grave, even when you stand on the day of judgment, that qalb, the qalb, if that thing that is connected, if that is telling you, your nafs, your desire is telling you to do bad, then you're in a bad state, man. If it's telling you to, yeah, go and lick a zoo, smoke it. Yeah, go and shot some drug. Yeah, go and mix the vodka and, 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 and smirn off and drink it. Nothing's gonna happen. Who cares, man? If you're at that state, you're at, you're at a very low state, man. You need to get out of that state. And you know, there's the next stage above that is what? Nafsul Lawama. When you do a sin, your you know your you know your conscious it says to you, man, I shouldn't have done that. Why did I swear at him? Why have I caused him harm? That's a good state. That's on, you know you're on the mend. Rehabilitation is occurring now. Subhanallah. You're on the mend back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you have the annafsul mutma'inna. You have the nafs, the conscious that tells you, it doesn't even tell you to do bad. Go and read namaz. It's namaz time. How can you miss your salah? Go and read some Quran today. How often do our, you know, there's two people living in one inside us. You have your mind and your heart. Even the doctors have now said, you know, just as the mind thinks, the neurons that make you think, everything in your mind, even the heart has that, that kayfiyat. The Quran spoke about it 1400 years ago. The Quran spoke about the life of the heart 1400 years ago. Allah bi Allah Almighty, so many places has st spoken about the Quran, uh, uh, spoken about the heart, and how the heart needs to be activated, how life needs to be in the heart. How a dead heart becomes alive again. This is why, you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran said, Fala tatabil hawa, you know, why did Allah Almighty say, Do not follow your desire? Allah Almighty immediately tells you why. You know your desire, it's going to misguide you from the path of Allah. Your desire will misguide you. You know, you, this is why as Muslims, what does Islam mean? What does the word Islam mean? Enter into the submission of Allah Almighty. It means to submit. That means when you are a true Muslim, a true Muslim, you know your desire, it submits to the will of Allah. That's a true Muslim. That his desire, it submits to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's, what, that's, what, that's the key. When you, are, when you are true believer of Allah Almighty and in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your will doesn't matter no more. Your desire doesn't matter no more. If Allah Almighty wants me to read salah, I will read salah, I will please him. Allah Almighty said, enter into the, and Islam means peace, but here, submission. Submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And that even in that submission, you can go even further. How much sincerity is there in that? How sincere are you in your submission? Are you submitting to Allah Almighty to prove a point to people? Say, yeah, I am now Sufi. <laughs> You're more of a Kufi, <laughs> not Sufi. Yeah, you know, he says, uh, why are you doing it? You see, it gets deeper. This is what the awliyaullah taught us, man. It gets deeper to get people out of the dunya. My biggest advice to the youth, you want to get out, go sit with people of Allah. Subhan. Hang around with good people. Adopt good company. Make your best friend the Quran. Make your best friend the Siratul Rasul. Make your best friend the Awliyaullah. You might never meet them. You might never sit with them. But when you read their, their lives, it's like you know it's, they're alive in front of you. It puts life inside you. Read Bishr Hafi's life. Look at how Bishr Hafi, Ibrahim ibn Adham, they said he was one of the pioneering awliyaullah or, or the scholars of Zuhd. Who taught the, the teachings of Zuhd to his disciples. Hazrat Ibrahim ibn Adham, he was a, a very famous king. He was a prince. His father was a badshah, a king. His father had everything, man. He had money, houses, you can name it. Today's time you have this, they had it then as well. Hazrat Ibrahim ibn Adham went out to do shikar. They went out hunting. When they went out to hunt, because they were, you know, they were rich, they had money. At that time, there was a fox there. And the fox said, Oh Ibrahim. And he looked around and said, Who's speaking to me? And it was the fox. He said, Oh Ibrahim, is this why you were created? To waste your life doing stuff like this. Sayyidina Ibrahim ibn Adham mentioned in Arisalat al Qushayriya, Abu Qasim al Qushayri, the Ustaz of Data Ali Hujwiri, student of Abu Abdul Rahman al Sulami. Imam al Qushayri quotes this in there, although Awliyaullah have quoted it in their Kutub as well, even the likes of Alama al Zahabi, men of uh, historians such as Alama al Zahabi, they have quoted it in their books as well. This waqia. And as Ibrahim ibn Adham startled and said, you know, he was amazed at, at the, you know, a fox, is, is, a wolf is telling him, is this what you've been created for? Immediately when Sayyidina Ibrahim ibn Adham heard this, he denounced the dunya. He left riches, king, palaces, everything, money, mal, dolat, women, everything he had, he left it. This is not the purpose of why Allah Almighty sent me to this dunya. Today, no wolf is going to tell you that. No wolf is ever going to tell you that was a great karama of that time. No one's going to tell you that. Today, how are you going to realize the books tell you, the ulama are telling you, your parents tell you, okay, this is not the way. So this hubbu dunya, the love of the dunya is the head of all evil, the head of every bad action, is that deep-rooted disease. A disease in our social society is they want to make you slave to the dollar. They want to make you slave to the, the, the pound note, the, the ten pound note. You earn that. Look at how, how we build our bank balances. Who had the Bishr Hafi had no bank balance? Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, you, you know, the great Al Ghothul Azam. Everyone knows who they are. The most celebrated Sufi in the, in the, in the, on the path of Tariqah and Sharia. Mujaddid of their time, great individual, Sahib Al Karama. Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, what, what money did they have? What did, they, what did the dunya teach them? What did life teach them? Everything's going to stay here, man. Nothing's going to follow you. And Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam asked a question. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Sahal ibn Sa'ad al-Sa'idi radiyallahu an. He came to Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam and he, man, he said that a man came to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, dullani ala amalin iza amiltuhu ahabbani allahu. Wa ahabbani al-nasu. That oh Allah Almighty's Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tell me. 
such an action that Allah Almighty will love me and the people will love me as well. So, Nabi alayhi salatu salam said, Izhad fi dunya. Become a zahid in the dunya. Become somebody who is ascetic through the dunya. An ascetic in the dunya. Be somebody who has disconnected from the dunya. Disassociated himself from the dunya. How often have you met a man like this? In the Western world, we live in UK, America. Come look, man, very rare people will you find who have disassociated themselves from the dunya. And this doesn't mean you don't drive a car, you don't have an iPhone. You don't, this doesn't mean that. You can have all that, it's just you don't have the desire for that. That's what it means. It means you can wear clothes, you can wear your Armanis, you can do all that. But it means they don't entertain you, man. This is nothing. That's what it is. That's what zuhud is. You know, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, one day a, a woman came and said, I want my son to be like you. And at that time, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, radiyallahu ta'ala, and they had really good clothes on. You know, mashallah, beautiful shoes, everything. And they said, you know, how can this be a celebrated great Sufi man of everyone in the dunya talks about him? You want to go, go to Sheikh Abdul Qadir in Baghdad, he will teach you. She said, I want my son to be like you. She gave uh, the son in the khidma of the Sheikh. At that time, two weeks had passed. Came back, the Sheikh is sitting in front of a big banquet. All food in front of him, good clothes on, everything. And the son that she left in the in the custodianship and in left in the under the in, under the guidance, he was sitting in the corner of the masjid, and uh, broken bread, eating this. No water. He was very really bad state. Clothes were very bad. She came and said, "Look, I wanted my son to be like you in the position you are." I said, "You want your son to be like me?" <laughs> they put their hand over a chicken and it came to life. <laughs> they put their hand over a chicken and it came to life. And they said, until your son can do this, then he has to go through what I went through as well. <laughs> Denounce the love for the dunya. That even when the dunya does come back to them, they can control it. The thing is, the dunya, we can't control it at this moment in time. It's uncontrollable. It's controlling us. We have become slave to it. The, we are, the dunya is not a slave to me and you. You know, Sayyiduna Ibrahim ibn Adham, when they were standing with their disciples, and they said, Shaykh, tell us, what is a sign of a waliullah? What's a sign of the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He said, you know, when a wali speaks, a friend of Allah Almighty speaks, mountains begin to move. When a wali of Allah Almighty speaks, a mount mountains begin to move. And at that time, mountains were starting to move. As soon as they said that, mountains began to move around them. Allah. And the, the disciple that narrates it, he said, as soon as the Shaykh mentioned that when a wali of Allah Almighty speak, mountains begin to move, we see mountains move around him straight away. That's a sign of a wali. Where are those awliya gone? Where are those men gone? Who the dunya is a servant to them. They are not a servant to the dunya. The dunya is in, under their control. Where are those abdals gone? Where are those great individuals who have Denounce the dunya, taken away the love and the disease of the dunya from their hearts. But they still live here. They still live in the houses you live in. They still walk and talk with people. Where have those people gone? How do we get back to that state? How do we become people like that? It all begins with first making yourself aware. You know, my job is to put this in your head now. You go away, you think about it. That's the first step. That's why Allah Almighty blessed you to sit here. You go away, you think about this now. You think about your life, assess your life, where you're going, where you're heading. What do you want to do? What do you want to be? How are you, what, head, what direction are you heading in? Have you ever thought about, am I going to hell or am I going to heaven at this moment in time? How often do we think like that? Okay, where am I going? What am I doing? Even if you're on the deen, which many of you seem to be here, ask yourself, why are you on the deen? Who are you doing it for? Where's your ikhlas? Where's your sincerity? What's the purpose of your life? You know, mukhlisin Allah Almighty in the Quran says they are mukhlis, they are sincere on their deen. That's the true people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you can see it on their face, the sincerity. 
You can see a true man of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Allah. Allah Almighty, Habib alayhi salatu salam says, when you see a man of Allah Almighty, he reminds you of Allah. How often have we seen men in our society that you look at them and you think of Allah Almighty straight away? We don't see that no more. We're too lost in, in pop culture. We're lost in the football culture. We're lost in these diseases in society. We're lost in what the latest movie is. What's the best car on the street? All about trying to... We're lost in our dreams. These are not the dreams that we should be having. These are not the aspirations that we should be reaching for. And if you yourself are not getting nowhere, don't destroy your kid's life. Think about his life. Because he, you know, he will end up growing up seeing what you did. And if he grows up seeing what you did, he will follow in the same footsteps. He's a child. If he sees you reading Salah, if, the, if he sees the mum reading Salah, then he will read Salah. Many, many brothers have come to me and they've said, my wife reads Salah, my son reads with her. Why? That's the effect. You don't realize. It's amazing, isn't it? When a child, you see your child at three, four years old doing sujood. I think it's even more amazing that when he reached the age of 20, he's still doing sujood. That's a, that's a karama of today, I tell you. That's how bad our society is going. Where are those youth who are on the deen, passion for the deen? That passion, you need to grow, you need to have that love. Love the deen, not the dunya. <coughs> they both begin with these. One is dunya, one is deen. Love the deen, not the dunya. That should be your motto, love the deen. There's no harm. I'm 21 years old, born and bred in this country. Yeah, 21 years old. Since 19, I was Imam. What do we have? What's our life? <laughs> we have to sacrifice everything. Our mothers, fathers, our hometown. What do we, what do, we do it for? What, what, why are we here? We don't need to be here. I could be out there chilling, being a gangster. I've got contacts, don't worry. I know killer T. <laughs> Come on T, sort it out. I make quick earners. I could go out and earn money like they do. No problem. Anyone can do that. But I think it's a great thing when I see a, a fellow 20 year old who's got a lihya, he's reading his salah, he's in the masjid five times a day, passionate about his deen, and he's in university studying, and he's on the Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. He gives a great buzz, you think, mashallah, he's blessed in both worlds. He's earning his degree in the dunya, his parents are happy with him, he's keeping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy five times a day salah, and he's on the correct aqidah. He's on the correct way of the Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. He's not deviated or misguided. He's upon guidance, upon the, the way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and His Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is why in the Quran, Allah Subhanahu, you see another hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they said this, the, the, the individual asked and said, Ya Rasulullah, tell me about an action that if I was to do it, Allah will love me and the people will love me. Nabi Alayhi Salatu Salam said, become a zahid in the dunya. Denounce the dunya, Allah will love you. You leave the dunya, Allah will love you. Allah Almighty loves the people of the Akhirah. Bishr Hafi Rahmatullah used to sit all night and you know the gatherings, they were called Zikrul Mawta or Zikrul Maut. The gatherings were gatherings of death. They were alive but they used to talk about the dead. And you know, you will, you will understand this when I come to the next hadith that Ibn Abi Dunya Rahmatullah narrates. And then immediately after Nabi Alayhi Salatu Salam said, was had fi ma fi aydin nasa yuhibbukan nas. And become zahid, denounce what is in your hands. Don't hold on to things for too long and the people will love you as well. Don't hold on to the dunya, Allah will love you. Don't hold on to materialism, the people will love you as well. Today sadly, those people who are in materialism, they love the people of materialism. Those people who are not there, you will not understand this hadith. Those who are not there, when they see a man who is not connected to the dunya, they will love him, they will run towards him. They're the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another hadith, the Haq radiallahu an, he said that a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, man azhadun nas. Oh Allah Almighty's Messenger, who is the one who is the greatest ascetic? He's the biggest zahid in the dunya. He's the one who's denounced and disconnected, dis no attachment to the dunya whatsoever. Who is it amongst the people? The Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, Man lam yansa al-qabra wal bila. He who has not forgotten his grave, he's the best person. We've forgotten our grave. 
He has not forgotten musibat and mushkilat. He doesn't forget the difficult times. He is a man of the dunya. He is the man of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa taraka fadla zinati dunya. And he's left the lavish, the entertainment of the dunya, he's left that. The man who is most connected to Allah Almighty, the Zahid, is he who does not forget his grave, first thing. The second thing, he has left love and lust and desire for the lavish aspects of the world. He's left that. He's not into excessive money, into flashy clothes. He's not into big flashy cars. He's got a simple car, very simple clothes, a simple house. He gets by day to day. That's all he is. He doesn't live life thinking he will live forever. He doesn't build a house thinking, that's it, this is me where I will... You're going to end up six feet under like everybody else. Even then, six feet, if you are fortunate that the, the dunya wants to accept you, the world wants to accept you. If it accepts you, then it will allow you inside there. If it doesn't, it throws you back out. And it's happened in history. Look at Yazid. Where is his grave? Nowhere to be seen. Because the dunya began to hate him because he hated Ahlul Bayt. That's what happens. When you begin, even the dunya detests people. This is why the Prophet said, He who has left the lavishness of the world is a Zahid. He's the best Zahid amongst them. Then the Prophet said, Athara ma yabka ala ma yafna. He's always affected by what is going to be eternal than what is temporary. He's always thinking about the permanent world. The permanent world, the world that is going to live forever. The thing that is baqi, not fani. He's always into baqa, not fina. He's always into something which is eternal. What is eternal? The Jannatul Firdaus, that is going to be eternal. That, that is where we achieve, that's what our aspirations should be. Nabi Salaam said, he who thinks about that, the eternal, something that is everlasting, then something that is going to end, he is the one who is Zahid. We are thinking too much about this world, the world that's going to end. We think too much about this, not that. That's the third thing Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Then they said, وَلَمْ يُعَدَّ غَدًا fi ayamihi." He doesn't think about tomorrow. He doesn't have high hopes and amal. He doesn't think tomorrow, I know I'm going to do this. He doesn't consider himself to be alive for tomorrow. He's worried about today. Bishar Hafi Rahmatullah used to say, he used to say, yesterday has gone. Yesterday, amsi kadmat. Yesterday has gone. Today is going, tomorrow might never come. Ghadan lam yulad. Tomorrow might never come for you. And today, now, al is going by quickly. Worry about today. Do the toba for yesterday. Forget about tomorrow. Don't think too much about tomorrow. What's happening right now? What, what are you doing at this moment in time? When you ask a young lad, what are you going to do, bro? When are, you going to, when are you going to join the deen? He says, you know, when I'm old, when I'm grey, when I've got no looks left and wrinkles on my face and no girl is going to look at me and that. When, there's, when I get to that state, then inshallah, I'll grow my beard and go to the masjid. When it's, you know, when I've got no, no flashiness, no lavishness about me, no flashy. It's true, isn't it? That's what you ask a young man. He says, don't worry, Imam Sahib, man. When the time's right, I'll do it. <laughs> Bishr Hafi Rahmatullah Ali said, don't worry about tomorrow. Nabi Salatu Salam said, he doesn't count himself about tomorrow. He doesn't count tomorrow in one of his days. He doesn't think about Tuesday and Wednesday. He's worried about today, now. What am I doing right now? And this is not in, in relation to future planning with good intention. That's good. This is in relation to what is your current state, your personal state. He's not worried about tomorrow's state. He's not thinking how he's going to be tomorrow because you never know about tomorrow. You don't know. You might be sad tomorrow or happy. He's saying, Nabi Salatu Salam is saying he's worried about now. He's hardy, he's present at this moment in time. Where am I going? Where am I heading in life? And then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَأَدَّ نَفْسَهُ مِنَ الْمَوْتَى And he counts himself amongst the dead people. He considers himself dead before he has died. He's worried that much about the akhirat, that much about the grave. When a person gets to this halat, where he considers himself amongst the dead people, no desire is left in his heart. I'm telling you, he's not worried about no car. He's not worried about dunya. He's worried about what, I'm, what face am I going to show to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where are my good deeds? 
And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran asks you, He doesn't ask you, He asks mankind in general. Allah Almighty in the Quran says, Ya ayyuhal insanu, ma gharraka bi rabbikal kareem. Oh man, what has deceived you from Allah? What has deceived you? What's the deception? What have you fallen into? I tell you, this ayat is related to today's time. Why? What's deceived me and you? The lavishness of this dunya has deceived us. It's deceiving us. It's fooling us. It's making us think we are forever. It's giving us this akar inside us. This manliness inside us. Yet hakikat is there's nothing left. It's everything going to remain here. Look at the past. Look in history. What's followed these big pop stars and gangsters to their graves? Nothing. Nothing follows you. Only your deeds. Your money doesn't go there. Your family will not even go there. In the end, it's just you and what you earned in life. That's what's going to follow you there. So why don't you worry about this? But this is the deception. This is that deception that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran is telling you. That what has deceived you, man? What has deceived you? Sometimes I think of this ayat all the time. Sometimes I be uh, walking, you know, I have a very bad habit of doing speeches when nobody's there. I think I'm doing a speech all the time. Seriously, I think that's why it's got me to where I am today. So people ask me, how, why do you speak so good and fluent and X, Y, and Z? And I said, you know, how do I prepare? When I walk on the, you know, going to Tesco's or something, I'll be doing a speech. <laughs> There was one time I, I sat on the member and nobody was in the masjid. Right? <laughs> I sat there and I, I just felt like reading this ayat of the Quran with immense passion. Look at the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh man, what's deceived you from your generous Lord? He who has given you everything, but you, what he has given you, what he has given you, you have made it into a deception. You take it in that way. When Allah Almighty has given you as a ni'mah, you do the khianat of this ni'mah. You do, you do bad to this ni'mah. <coughs> this is why, look, this ayat is so relevant to today's time. Always do dhikr of this ayat. Always ask yourself, what has deceived you? Why are you being deceived? Open your eyes, wake up, young man. Wake up and look in society. Look at the mistakes of the people in the past. Look at those who were successful in the past. We still sit to remember them. Those who were unsuccessful, where are they? Who remembers them? We do ghibat about them. We talk bad about them. They don't leave a good trace. They leave a bad mark in society. But those of men of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 1200 years can go by, but you still remember their name. That's the mark they left in society at that time. Where are those people gone? Where are those men who went to become men of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And Allah, Allah Almighty in the Quran again has said, Ya ayyuhal insanu, again to man, not to just Muslims, to non-Muslims. Ya ayyuhal insanu, O man, inna ka qadihan ila rabbika qadhan fa mulaki. Ke o man, O insan, you have to work hard to reach your aim to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to work very hard to get to Allah Almighty. It's not easy, it's a hard path. When the Quran Allah Almighty says, do you think that you're going to say, I am a Muslim, and Allah is not going to test you? You think you're going to come into his religion and Allah is not going to test your iman. He's not going to test you to see whether this man is worthy of this. Subhan Allah Almighty is going to test you. And boy, oh boy, has he tested us. Has he tested us and are we failing? How we are failing the test? Yet Allah Almighty, how kareem is he? How generous is he that he gave the answers to the exam as well? Subhan he gave us everything. Yet we still are far from him. How often do we sit to remember him? Yet he was there when nobody was there for me and you. He, Rabbi Zul Jalal, continues to provide for you even when you have no provisions whatsoever. Why? Why is it we have we have lost in the deception of the dunya? Hubbud dunya, ratsukulli Love of the dunya is the head of every evil thing. Remove and take the love of the dunya out of your hearts. Instill your heart with Iman and Islam. Instill your heart with love of Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How are you going to do this? What's the solution to this? Sit with the Sufiya. Sit with the men of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Sit with people who talk about death. They're not boring. Go visit the graveyard. How often do you, have you been to the graveyard? How often have you gone there and sat there and thought, 
I'm going to be six feet under one day. How often? How often have you ever thought like this? No. Never. Go. Make intention. You're going to the graveyard tomorrow. Go see. Visit. And, and see where that will take you. My belief and understanding that eventually the, the thing that the youth will need, and I will conclude on this, is that they need to be attached uh, physically and spiritually to Islam. And we need to make them aware of this. Because if we do not make them aware of this, then there is going to become a problem and this problem will continue. This is one little solution in the big problem that we have. That we need to become more aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to attach ourselves to the masjid, to the Quran. We need to attach ourselves to the people of Allah. And we need to disconnect. We need to connect with them, disconnect. You know the subscription you have for Sky? It runs out, doesn't it? You know the subscription you have with the dunya, it's going to run out one day. <coughs> Let it run out before it actually runs out. Unsubscribe from the dunya before you actually unsubscribe from the dunya. What does that mean? That means unsubscribe from the dunya right now from the passions and the, last, the lusts and lavishness before the dunya actually unsubscribes from you. That's when you die. So there's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ said, Mutu qabla an tamut. Die before you actually die. It means kill your desire before you actually leave the dunya. Do not become worshippers of your desire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran again. Fala tattabi'il hawa. Do not follow your desire. Fayudilluka an sabilillah. It will misguide you from the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give us tawfiq to become amongst the Zahideen. I believe that this will be the way and the cause of stopping. And this will be the thing that will take the youth of drugs and alcohol. You give them this, you try to instill, you talk to them. And you yourself become good Muslims and you help them. They are your fellow brothers. You've got to help them back onto the deen. This is a duty that we have. Inna al mu'minina ikhwa. The believers are brothers. So we need to help one another. If we see a problem inside, we do it with the best wisdom. When you call people to the way of Allah Almighty, you do it with wisdom. And you do it with good character. Two things for a da'i, wisdom and good character. Let's go back to the basics of our religion. Forget the lost list of the, this dunya. You can have your iPhone as long as it doesn't. It's not what dictates you, it's fine. You can have a flashy laptop, there's no harm. You can have a big car if you wanted. Nabi Salam said, fortunate is he who has a nice car. He has a big house, good wife. He's very fortunate. Yeah, and it's a good thing. But it becomes bad when it dictates you. And I didn't mean the wife bit. Don't want the sisters to kick off and say, Imam Sahib is saying, we are dictating. Allah Almighty give us tawfiq. To act upon what I have said. Give me tawfiq to act upon what I have said. Allah Almighty guide the youth back to the way of the Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Almighty continue to bless our Ustad, Shaykh uh, Yazdaini Sahib, and, and bless this, this institute that they are starting, this humble work that they have begun. Every one of you needs to support this for this to be successful. Uh, open your hands uh, in, in, in terms of donation, in terms of dua in terms of always try to support a good mission. That's the way. The only way Muslims will be successful is when we support one another, not attack one another. The problem that we are facing today is that there is too much internal uh, civil fighting and politics that is occurring within us. You know, I was talking yesterday in Kifli on akhlaq, character, and I mentioned there, uh, and, and a point came to my mind that I didn't mention, is that, you know, you know how bad our state has gone? Muslims are fighting Muslims. That tells you how bad we have got. There was a time Muslims were united and it was the enemy that they fought. Now the time has come where we are fighting one another. The same religion of, of people. Why? Why has it got to this state? This is why akhlaq, character is very important in today's day and age. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our good efforts and hard efforts that we are making. Allah Almighty continue to shower rahmah and mercy into our lives. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم وأخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين